Hello. How are you? Good, Gal. How are you? Uh, I'm well. Excited to talk to you. Excited to talk about a new Styx record. Quite, you too. quite a surprise. Well, uh, um, you know, <laughs> 14 years later, we decided to uh, subject ourselves to the, the punishment of the critics and what, what have you, and uh, and take another take another run at it. And uh, it's kind of inspired by uh, by NASA and the discovery of the. Pluto having a fifth moon and them inviting us to see the flyby when the when the space probe went past it and stuff and uh, get the first pictures back from oh so far away in space and uh, find out there's a bunch of Sticks fans in NASA and it kind of uh, I think was help inspired the, this whole thing um, newly inspired us who uh, rode the tales of Come Sail Away back <laughs> forty years ago right and uh, get back get back into the outer space business. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of well-timed, too, because I was thinking about the generations. Like, you guys grew up in a time when space travel was the new frontier, and every little boy wanted to fly, and now here we are in what feels like this space renaissance. Um, if you went searching for a theme, and I don't know how you guys did it, if you, if you decided, you know, let's make a new record and we need a theme, or, or how it happened, but it was the perfect time to kind of pull that back in for this theme. Well, it, it um, the whole, the genesis was kind of uh, maybe... Two years ago, when because when, uh, Tommy is kind of the lead writer in the band Tommy Shaw, mm-hmm. my guitar playing colleague, and he's he's gone off and done projects with other people. He did a bluegrass record with Alison Krauss a couple years back, and uh, I, I never know what he's what he's up to, and he's kind of not been interested sometimes in in making new music or at least thinking about it. And uh, but all of a sudden he said, "I've got I've got this concept, and it's this is what it's inspired by, and I've got some music here that I've been working with." He has an outside collaborator that he worked with on his Bluegrass record, and and actually his his old buddy Jack Blaze from Damn Yankees. They'd go out and do acoustic performances where they play stick songs, Night Ranger songs, and and some uh, some 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 you know some other stuff from Damn Yankees. Obviously, do an acoustic thing, and this guy was a, the third the uh, the third voice in that. A guy named Will Ivankovich, who's uh, very skilled in his own right, and so he and Tommy had been doing some writing and. Uh, Kind of went on from there, and uh, and then they brought the rest of the band kind of into it, and uh, we said, hey, this looks like it feels like the right time for us to do this. Um, we, you know, 14 years ago we put Cyclorama, we thought it was a great record, but we got like virtually no traction with it whatsoever, and so it was that was kind of a painful thing to spend a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money on something that went nowhere. But um, that's what that's what we used to do in the in the, in the early days, and it just took us. 14 years to get our gumption up to try it again but uh at this point we're we have very low expectations but but high hopes because we think this is a great record and there's some great songs on here and then the whole concept of it just kind of there's a lot of themes that, that do resonate with life on earth that they were just using uh, the to travel through space as a metaphor to, to get to those themes yeah and i noticed on there in the writing you guys are betting on 2033 as the year we make it to mars would you buy the ticket? Would you would you pay for the ticket yourself? You hear about these folks going to uh, to the moon, wanting to go to the moon. How about you? What's uh... uh? I'd go to the moon. I don't think I would go to Mars. <laughs> the moon. I think there's it's a good chance of getting back from uh, Mars. Uh, there's all kinds of issues they have yet to solve, and uh, <laughs> and plus plus I think the big thing was we we just we went to there's a, NASA has a, a facility in Huntsville, Alabama. They they showed us it, it costs a fortune to bring water into outer space. So the way you continue to get water is you recycle your urine. Uh, any 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 sort of wastewater gets all completely recycled, and and they've, they've got a way to where it comes out like really fresh pure water. Um, but the whole idea you recycle all your waste um, <laughs> when you're up there is the but because because you can't bring it. You, <laughs> now you're going on a trip and you know you can stop at the. At the at the gas station and pick up some chips and uh, and a Coca Cola or whatever. It's uh, you got to bring it all with you and uh, a trip to Mars. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I, I do want to say musically, the whole thing sounds. I mean, rejuvenated. I don't know is even strong enough word for this because it was so much fun to listen. And, and as you talk about the lyrical plan, what was the musical plan in this when they bring you you know the theme and the idea? What did you guys go into it talking about musically? Because there, it does seem like there is, it's more than just jamming, I guess. Well, I, I think I, the um, God bless and God rest our original drummer, John Panazza, who passed in 96, but his replacement is 
has been voted, Todd Zuckerman has been voted like number one rock drummer in Regis Polls of Modern Drum Magazine more than once, and he's almost always in the top five or ten there. And he's just, he's, he allows us to go off into sort of more adventurous time signatures. And I think, you know, just overall as a band, you know, writing simple 12 bar songs. It's still fun to do, but we we also have the ability to go beyond that and go off into crazy time signatures for a minute or two here and there, and which which creates a different feel and and just kind of adds to these for certain things. I mean, there's a song called Red Storm on there where we go into all these crazy different things, but it, that that would happen in a cinematic sense, you know, if you were subject to a big dust storm on on Mars. So it. Uh, it um we we just have, we have the ability to stretch a lot more and because there's no pressure on us to come up with ten singles on this record like there was maybe back in the day you know we we'll we'll, we'll we'll write straight ahead stuff in four four for about half the record and then we'll just you know have an adventure for ourselves time signature wise and and just musical structure wise with the other half of the record. Well, I love the way it's turned out. And, and the whole thing that you guys kept this a secret for a few years, I mean, I can't help but quoting you with secret, secret, I've got a secret, but <laughs> 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 like, you know, that nobody slipped up and, and put this out into the press is, is sort of, uh, is sort of amazing these days. I don't know. I, I'm not involved in social media at all, although our, we certainly are, our six world.com is our website and we have people in our office that are, you know, have, we have a Facebook page and all that stuff, and that that's all ben- beneficial in terms of bringing people in. But just uh, you know, we we did this very quietly, and uh, <laughs> and then maybe just the mainstream press doesn't really care care very much about you know sticks anymore. So it, it was uh, not as difficult to hide it because nobody was looking for it, <laughs> and uh, and that that's that's partly be having been gone for more than ten years. I think that people figured maybe they're never going to make another record. So yeah. Did you think that uh, maybe you would ne- never make another record? Well, I mean, people, you know, and I'd say people might have said, are these guys ever going to make another record? Uh, well, we heard that a lot, so. Mm-hmm. Um, but we finally just kind of decided to ride with it and, and wait to see if we could get, you know, make Because if people know about it in advance, then, then it takes too much, you know, it takes another year or two to come out. Then by the time it does come out, nobody cares about it anymore, and we decided we're going to just got to dump it all at once and, and um, see where that gets us. And so, so far we get, uh, there's a lot of excitement in, in six fan world. And, and I think uh, the response of people like you who are just hearing it now, they say we've, we've done good work and uh, we'll see where that gets us. All right. Well, I'm excited about it. I, I do love what I've heard so far. Congratulations and looking forward to the tour this summer as well. It was, uh, it was really nice uh, talking pleasure, to you. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you around. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.